today's lesson, we are going to learn how to take a closed version of a string quartet score and re engrave it into open score. Now, the first thing you have to do is go grab a ruler and do your best to write the new bar lines directly underneath where they were in the original score. Now, we're going to do this to help our eyes. Uh, stay organized and not get lost. If you draw crooked bar lines or they're disproportionate or they're not equal or they're completely different from what the original score looked like, there is a very high chance that the notes you write are going to uh, be full of errors. So it's really important you try to make like a neat graph you'd be doing in school. So you write the bar lines directly underneath where they were in the original score and you can see here at the end of the four staves, I've also included a double bar line, just like was presented in the original string quartet score. Now, after that, I'm going to write the clefs, the time signature, the key signature, and a sectional bracket. So remember, the first violin and the second violin are both written in treble clef. The cello is written in bass clef, and of course the viola is written in alto clef, one of the new C clefs we learned in the scales unit. Now this string quartet is in D major, so everybody gets a D major key signature, and everybody gets a time signature. Now the next thing you have to do is to write the note heads. Now I always write the note heads first, I put my ruler aside and I go ahead and I write the note heads and then after that I will write in the stems and the beams. Now you have to make sure that you do your best to write the note heads again directly underneath where the original notes were in the original score. And this is easy to do if you've used a ruler and set up your bar lines correctly. So here are all my note heads and I've even got an extra small note head in bar 3. Uh, five note heads away from the bar line to represent the grace note. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. We have 8th notes, 16th notes, and 32nd notes in this score. So what I do first is I write the outer stems and the beams, as you can see here. And I fill in the extra 16th lines and the 32nd lines and beams after. Now one of the reasons I do this is to get the beam angle uh, correct. Now you may have learned this earlier on, but the angle of a beam is not supposed to exceed the interval of a third. Okay, so as you can see in the very first bar, there's a B up there, and the, there's a stem going down, and then there's a beam angled upwards, and it connects it to a high D. Now, you can see the beam is kind of sitting right underneath the B line. It's kind of in the A space in the treble clef, and it tilts upward until it's in the C sharp space. So that would be angling a beam at a third, since A to C is a third you can never angle a beam greater than this. So this is why I write all the beams and stems, or this is why I write all the outer stems and the beams first, to get these angles appropriate. Then you can see in bar three, there's a beam that is flat. And also in bar two, there's a beam that's flat. You know a beam is flat if the inner notes are closer to the middle line than the two outer notes. After I've done that, I go ahead and I write the other stems inside the beams, and then I go add in the 16th note beams and the 32nd note beams. Now to save time, I've quickly written out the other parts since they all follow the same rules. I would have written the notes, the note heads first, and then the stems, and then the beams, and of course, the stems have been readjusted so that they're in the correct direction. Remember, if the note head is on the B line or above, the stem goes down. And if a note head is below the B line, the middle line of the stave, 
then the stem goes upwards. Now after that I can go in and add the ties and the slurs. Now in the original score, when you have closed position, the slurs usually act as mirror image to the note heads. So you can see here in the viola part, if you look at the closed, uh, closed position score, the slurs are on top of the stems and just above the beams. But here in the open position score, they've been moved to, to their correct place. They are on the opposite side of the stem. And after that, we can go in and add the tempo marking, the expression markings, and the dynamic markings. So on the original string quartet score, there was only one dynamic marking. It was piano right in the middle of the grand stave. Now, in the open position score, every single string part requires a piano marking. So the first violin needs it, the second violin needs it, the viola needs it, and the cello needs it as well. I've also included the dolce, which means sweet, and it is beside every dynamic marking. It's an ex Dolce would be called an expression marking, and every single instrument got its own expression marking. The tempo marking, however, Adagio Cantabile, is only written once, because we only need to write tempo markings once per section. And since this string quartet is uh, considered one single section, it only needs one tempo mark. And there you have it. That's how to engrave string quartet score.